Hi, everyone. Welcome. Um, this is the third rendition of the Virtual State Candidate Forum for Texas JSA. Uh, with me here are all of the candidates for state level positions in this year's election. Of course, we all originally made this change because of the pandemic, but it honestly seems like we're really enjoying the virtual voting system. So yeah, here we are again. Um, I'm Mitsuki, your current Texas Lieutenant Governor, and I'll be asking the questions today. And of course, it's super exciting to have everyone here with me. Um, for some basic rules, no slander, no negativity, and let's keep everything PG and respectful. <laughs> I know that these elections can get pretty competitive, but at the end of the day, we're all friends right and we should all be supportive of each other yes so also remember that you all have to work with each other next year anyway so regardless of the outcome of the election so yeah again please refrain from saying anything negative about anyone here um so we're going to start with some quick introductions uh we can start with the governor candidate and then just move our way through ltg speaker and if you guys could just say your name uh your grade level what position you're running for and then your chapter and region um so we can start with tez all righty hey everyone my name's uh tez uh pardo i'm in 11th grade and i'm uh, running to be your next governor and i hail from basis chavano in the heart of the acr region uh, we'll move on to Ava. Hey guys, I'm Ava Abraham. I'm a junior and I attend Shatter Creek High School, which is um, in the GCR, and I'm running to be your next Lieutenant Governor. Kushi? Hey guys, I'm Kushi Patel and I am from San Marcos High School and from the ACR region and I'm running for your next Lieutenant Governor. Varun. Oh, I'm in, I'm in the great. Oh, yeah, okay. And Varun? Uh, hey, all. I'm Varun Manicum, and I'm a junior right now at Bellar High School, which is in the GCR region, and I'm running to be your lieutenant governor. And then Pranav, and then Rayleigh. Hi, I'm Pranav Kokola. I'm also a junior, and I go to Planet West Senior High School in the PMR, and I'm running to be your next speaker of the house. Um, hi, my name is Rayleigh Nam. I'm a junior as well, and I go to Bel Air High School, which is in the GCR region, and I'm also running for your Speaker of the House. Awesome. Okay, so the way this is going to work is we're essentially going to rotate by position. Um, so first, all of the Speaker of the House candidates are going to answer two questions, and then the LTG candidates, and then our Governor candidate. Um, so when it's your position's turn, I'm going to call all of the candidates in a particular order. And then, of course, the order will be different for the second question. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Um, everyone's response uh, to the questions. Uh oh, well, she's not going first. It's fine. But everyone's response to those questions should be um, at most two minutes long. I'll, I'll, I'll time you. And I even have time cards. I feel like I'm doing Congress again, but I'll give you time signals for when you have one minute and 30 seconds left. And then, of course, I'll start the timer on your first word. So if anyone has any questions, you can ask those now. If not, I'll just we can just get started. OK, I think we're good. So we're going to start off with two questions for the speaker candidates. So first, we're going to go in alphabetical order by last name. So we'll start with Pranav. And then we'll go on to Rayleigh. Um, let me change the layout. So, OK. So the first question is, what led you to run for Speaker of the House as opposed to any of the other big three positions? Yeah, so in my freshman year, I was also part of the House of Representatives. And I saw that there was a lot of change that probably needed to be had when it comes to passing legislation and making sure that there's equal representation from both the Senate and the House. I was part of the Senate in my sophomore year, and I saw that writing legislation is really important to what Texas JSA actually does, because the JSA Constitution is what needs to be changed in order for actual implementation of our ideas and implementation of what we need to see in order for Texas JSA to only become better. So I'm running for Speaker of the House specifically because 
I think that the House of Representatives can get a lot more involved when it comes to many different events or regional affairs that are really important to Texas JSA. And the House of Representatives is currently underutilized or sometimes not utilized for certain events that I would like them to be a part of. And just overall, I think that becoming Speaker of the House would give me a lot of influence over this specific area that I am pretty knowledgeable about, I feel like, and would also make sure that I have a lot of say when it comes to regional affairs and also when it comes to cabinet. Because as convention coordinator this year, I've made sure that I'm involved in many of the events that are being planned. But as Speaker of the House, I would have more communication with the JSAF, a lot of the adults in the situation in which I can get more involvement and more support for my ideas that I really want to see happen and support for things that I want to see done in Texas JSA itself. Um, I guess I can go now. So again, my name is Rayleigh Nam, and I chose to run for Speaker of the House because like Pranav said, the House of Repre Re Representatives and being a Speaker of the House is the like first step to make change in JSA as you can write legislation to enact changes and to also address specific issues. So the reason I wanted to run for the House of Representatives is because I've been a part of JSA for three years. And while my journey has been like spectacular so far, I realized that there can be some improvements that can be made towards JSA and certain changes that would not only help just myself, but also other chapters that are in the GCR region and possibly even outside the GCR region. And so the reason that I wanted to run for speaker is that my plan for the, being a speaker of the house was to have CIA departments and CIA agents specifically communicate to individual chapters and chapter presidents, as well as have a form where anyone, any individuals or chapters can fill out any uh, issues or any problems that they want, they would like to see addressed. And so as being speaker, I can bring up these issues and bring up these like actual like topics that we need to discuss in these meetings and seeing how like currently the House of Representatives is underutilized and not as important as it could be. I say that the most important thing is to actually bring up these issues. And when we have representatives, also increase the pool of what, what, what could be addressed and who's addressing them. As currently, I see that there's not a lot of people inside. And so what we could do is have one chapter bring one representative to each meeting, or at least have like a summary of each meeting and send it out to the people. As before this year, I didn't really know what the House of Representatives was and what it actually did because there was just a lack of information and a lack of consensus about like what the House of Representatives was in JSA. And so the reason I want to do that is to one, enact change. And two, if you go through my platform, you can see the step-by-step -step process of what I said about like how we're going to enact this change. And so again, my main important thing is that communication is really key. And so with communication and effective lines, we can actually part one address these issues. And then first, when we're when I'm in the speaker of the house, I can actually like bring up these issues and bring up more representation and actually try to pass these issues. And so that's the reason I want to go for speaker of the house. All right, awesome. So for this next question, we're going to reverse the order and start with Rayleigh and then move on to Pranav. So the question is, if you could choose one word to describe your campaign, what would it be and why? I think the word would be accessibility. So my slogan for my campaign is NAM is your man. And the reason that I chose this like slogan was because I wanted to represent each JSA member, not just like individual chapters, not just like directors. I wanted to represent each member and get their best interest. So some of the things I wrote in my platform was increasing like individual chapters, like participation or members. And we can do that like through the publicity department or the fundraising department. And so everything in my campaign is about having the individual needs of peoples to be addressed. That's why, again, like I mentioned, like just in the previous question about having like this feedback form or individual like CIA agents talking to these representatives from a chapter in order to understand what their specific problems is and as to what we can do or what I can do to help these individual chapters and these people. And so the whole purpose of my campaign and my thing is just like increasing participation, increasing accessibility, and just making an overall smoother transition. As I've realized that like the expansion department has done a really great job this year of adding new chapters, but still like some chapters have become kind of stagnant in their member count, as well as they have kind of died out. And so like to, my whole issue is to combat these problems. And we can first, I can do this by addressing them in the House of Representatives meetings, but also by just bringing attention to them. Because right now, again, like the House of Representatives isn't as like being utilized, isn't as like valued as it once was. And so I want to bring that back. I want to bring back the House of Representatives as it once was and try to actually enact changes by passing legislation. So again, 
Nam is your man, please vote for me. And I guess that's like my whole slogan about like increasing participation and increasing like awareness. Yeah, so I think that for my campaign specifically, one word that could describe what I'm trying to do is engagement. And what I mean by this is that kind of on the participation type of thing, I think that the House of Representatives, bouncing off of what I was saying in the last question, is underutilized. And the way that we can actually properly utilize it, as some of my platform points discuss, is making sure that representatives have more of an impact when it comes to regional events. And what I mean by that is that I'm going to send out a form at the start of the year in which people can send in the information and send in what kind of role that they would like to play when it comes to regional events. And they can actually be involved. And regional officials don't have to scramble for people at the last minute in order for them to plan their conventions and them to plan their events. And my entire campaign, my entire platform is centered around getting people engaged into the main ideas of Texas JSA, but more than that, getting them engaged in what we actually do in the first place. Because I feel like in between major conventions, there's not much that people in Texas JSA can do. And getting people involved through the House of Representatives or getting people involved when it comes to putting in their ideas, putting in their own words for what they want to see changed in Texas JSA is truly what I'm all about and what I want to see in terms of my campaign and what I want to see implemented if I were to become Speaker of the House, because this is certainly an area that has to improve if we are to grow as Texas JSA and to grow as a organization in general. All right, thank you so much to our two speaker candidates. So now we're going to move on to our three Lieutenant Governor candidates. Uh, this time we're going to start in alphabetical order by first name. So we'll start with Ava, then Kushi, and then Varun. So your first question is, all big three members oversee two to three departments within cabinet. If you are elected to be a Lieutenant Governor, which two departments would you oversee and why? So the two departments that I would want to oversee would be the CIA department and the activism department. And I'll kind of like break down like why I would want to focus on each department. So I'd want to oversee the CIA department because I've had a past experience working within the CIA department, being a CIA agent and then also the CIA deputy director this year. And I see some of the internal problems that face the face this department, including like chapter some chapter presidents not responding or trying to res, uh, communicate with TAs and not really getting the response that we need. And so by overseeing CIA department, I would help them maybe create more professional TA group chats and workspaces so that everyone is able to collaborate and also increasing the amount of engagement we have because as a CIA department, we are like assigned chapter presidents as CIA agents and we're given tasks and we just kind of have to do that by ourselves as agents and as directors. So increasing the amount of collaboration we have within the department is something that I would also focus on if I were to be elected and oversee that department. And then in terms of activism, one of the main things in my platform is increasing the amount of engagement we have. And I think, I believe that starts with the activism department by sending out activism projects and um, at chapter stuff that chapters can do at their own level in order to raise awareness about different nonprofit organizations and different organizations just to help out in general. And by overseeing the activism department, once again, we can increase that collaboration and engagement that occurs. And we can also bring in chapters as well to ensure that they're um, being more involved within Texas J in itself. Okay, I guess uh, if I were to be the lieutenant governor, I would oversee the CIA and the and the, uh, the fundraising because CIA in our school, there's some CIA members and then they talk about their CIA experience and how I think it's just some of the CIA are inactive. So I want to look that they're really getting their job done and they're really doing what CIA needs to get done and then the fundraising because I think smaller smaller chapters have to pay way much than they can and then it just loads the smaller chapters so I want to I want I want the fundraising department to really work on how much they can fundraise per year so they can help out the the smaller chapters 
instead of like just help instead of just being being able not to pay and go Hi. Um, so I'm Vern Manicum again, and the two departments that I would oversee um, is really strategically kind of put together, which is the expansion department and the chapter's internal affairs department. So both those departments are kind of centered on the same focus, that it's trying to keep some sort of relation with new people and also people that are already in the organization from the chapter basis itself. Um, so for the expansion department specifically, I'm currently the deputy director and was the expansion agent last year. Um, so I kind of know the, all the ins and outs of the department and how, what are like the most effective techniques to try and getting new chapters. And through that experience, I've also seen the same exact issues that reoccur over and over again, which is finding difficulties to get into these conventions, but also being able to afford these things. Um, so by prioritizing that we have an expansion fund that allows for new chapters to be really welcomed in to the JSA experience, allows for more attendance, which in, theoretically improves the uh, the experience for all of us with it, even if we're already in the in going to these conventions already. Um, that also goes hand in hand with the chapter internal affairs department because the chapter internal affairs department is all about maintaining that connection. So as an expansion, I've, I've been seeing that transitioning to its chapters internal affairs or the CIA department is quite difficult because a lot of these chapters are not able to keep in the loop and exactly see how they can get more involved in the experience. By maintaining their, their involvement and making sure that they are kept up to date on all the new news and being able to for an increased transparency and accessibility to these conventions allows for more people to be more rewarded with what they're trying to get out of the JSA itself. So it's not just a place where people can just come to conventions and forget about it, but rather they can leave with an actual portable educational experience that they can reflect on in the future. All right, so for this next question, uh, we're going to start with Varun and then do Ava and then finally Kushi. So the question is, one year from now, what is the most important accomplishment you hope to have achieved in your tenure as Lieutenant Governor? Um, so my, I think the best accomplishment that I'll be really, really satisfied with is in general increasing attendance and allowing for less deadlock when it comes to departments. Um, so this can kind of be uh, on my platform, I kind of condense this into two main fundamentals, which is transparency and accessibility. Um, so I think I really want to see more people coming to these conventions, at least three more chapters every single new convention that allows for more people to get involved, increasing our diversity all together, being more inclusive of different populations and being able to really get everyone into the idea of fighting political apathy instead of it just being very secluded to the few chapters that have been here for a very long time. Um, and that also goes in with transparency because I feel like a lot of people are really, are the department's unable to get many things done because it's not a clear agenda for them to get things done. So by allowing people to, uh, by creating my, my feedback form that I'm planning to do that goes directly to the executive department, anyone, regardless if you're in cabinet or just a member, you can submit any kind of complaint or some sort of idea that you just want to see be done. So that way you eliminate all the middlemen and you can see exactly what we can delegate. So we know, so that way these departments know exactly what they're getting into and what people really want. Um, so by able to channel all of this activity into one area, we're seeing a lot of more, we're seeing a lot more transparency and thus you're seeing more retention by people coming to these conventions and being more involved altogether. Because for me, my, my main goal is not just people coming, but for people to be really, to, for them to actually lead these conventions, feel like a better person, feel more educated and feeling like they can come away with this experience. That's something that they, they did not enter with. One of the one of the main pillars in my campaign includes communication. So one thing that I would hope to accomplish by next year, if I were to be elected, is strengthening strengthening the amount of regional communication that we have going on. I feel like a lot of times people know about Texas JSA and then they know about the three big conventions. And I'm pretty sure someone brought this up earlier. It's like we have this space in between the convention. It's like what do we do in between those periods? And one thing I'd really want to focus on is strengthening that regional communication because with that with that strength in regional communication we can focus on having more one day conventions that have um, mini debate workshops and mini activism workshops i know the pmc literally just had a convention yesterday but recently in the gcr and i don't know about other regions but in the gcr we haven't had conventions like that in a long time and i know that it's difficult to communicate between the chapters within that region. So I think by strengthening the amount of regional communication we have, we'd be able to, in a way, fill in those gaps between those big periods that are left unfilled between 
fall state and then winter congress and then spring state and then also by strengthening the amount of regional communication we can highlight the work that different chapters are doing oftentimes i feel like the work that some of our chapters are doing no matter their size big or small it goes often unnoticed and they're doing amazing things what some of our chapters are doing so really highlighting the work the chapters our chapters are doing within each region and really strengthening our regions i believe will make an effective effort into not only making our region stronger but also texas jsc as a whole One of my main pillars of my campaign is enrichment. And when I say enrichment, I really want to bring out JSA's maximum impact on people that are in the JSA and then the students. In, in smaller chapters, I feel like they just go to conventions and just attend there and have, have their fun experience. But JSA is just more than that. JSA really needs to hold its accountability and inclusivity to students that are in it. So I feel like I want to improve uh, the senators of the regions that really communicate with the mayors because being the mayor, I could not get hold of my own senators. And for me to make them really work or make them really be involved, I had to, I had to text them many times. So I feel like the communication is just not being the very great part of JSA. So including including organization and communication, we can really make longer strides of JSA and its impact on people. JSA also leaves a great mark on people that that do greater things fi like fighting political apathy or or being being a politician, something like that. But my main priority is to produce more opportunities for delegates and that that way they can form relationships and foster a family-like environment okay finally we are going to have two questions for our governor candidate tez so the first question is uh what has been your biggest impact on texas jsa so far okay <clears throat> i love that question so um, I'm the director of CIA, um, if you didn't know about that. I think one of the biggest impacts I've had is on the CIA department itself. And I'll do it through a twofold approach. One is the chapter point system. You know, if you ever talk to me, that's one of the things I always bring up is chapter point system. I love the chapter point system. Now, it's not perfect. I've definitely gotten a lot of feedback and I'm very excited to see what it, the chapter point system will look like next year. Because there's a lot of different things that I hope that the next director of CIA will add on to it and it will be re-ingrained into, you know, JSA culture. And so I'm really proud of the fact that I was able to kind of start this chapter point system to get more chapters engaged and have all these activities occurring on a statewide level. And so hopefully that it'll increasingly, uh, you know, as, as we progress year on year and year, the chapter point system will become more ingrained within, you know, JSA's culture. And yeah, it's so exciting. The second thing though, I'm really, really proud of is the communication aspect is that I, I was a chapter president last year. And so I lived through what the, the CIA department was like last year. And so that really influenced my mentality when I came to the CIA CIA department this year. And so because of that, I really wanted to improve communication because I, you know, joined as chapter president and then I just, the communication aspect just wasn't really that great from, for me. And I also heard that from a lot of other chapter presidents. And I know this because I've been able to institute multiple methods of communication, such as through iMessage, Remind, and Slack, three different avenues to ensure that everyone gets the communication that they need effectively. And I've been told many times that my communication has been significantly improved since last year. And I'm really proud of that. And yeah, that's overall my biggest, uh, proudest thing I've ever done within JSA as of right now is just helping to transform the CIA department. And I can't wait for what it looks like next year. Yeah. All right. And the second question is, what is the most crucial takeaway from your campaign platform? Okay. The, I, the most crucial aspect of my platform is the fact that of my, of my slogan, for you and with you. And here's why. Because I'm here, when I thought of running, I didn't know what I was running for. And I really sat down to myself and said, hey, if I'm gonna run, I'm running for an actual purpose, for an actual reason. And I saw the fact that there's so many different things I wanna do within JSA. And the way that I can achieve by implementing these ideas is by becoming governor and working for you and with you, is that I'm here to work with you. So I'm not here to just become governor and then just, you know, 
work in my theoretical office away from you guys, but instead I'm here to work with you guys. I'm here to work with my cabinet members, my mayors, my senators, even just regular chapter members. I want to engage with you guys on all aspects of JSA at all levels. And so the biggest takeaway is the fact that I'm here to work with you and be here for you and that my campaign is here to just embody everything that I hope to make what a lot of people have been saying and emphasizing is just to make JSA just an overall more fun organization that brings a larger takeaway for everyone and just increases engagement. And I don't know, I'm just, I'm so excited that I'm running. It's always been amazing going to events and talking and stuff like this. And so I really want to hone in on the point that I am really here to just be here with you and work here for you. And yeah. All right, um, so we're going to move on to one more rotation through all three positions. Um, these questions are going to be a little more position specific, and then we'll also have a satirical question, of course, to spice things up a little bit. But uh, we'll start with the LTG candidates this time, and we'll start from Cushy, and then Varun, and then Ava. So the question is, as you probably know, the lieutenant governor is in charge of overseeing the fair elections committee. What, if anything, would you change about Texas JSA elections and why? And I promise I won't take this personally. Okay, seeing that many people just many people just don't do not know about FEC is kind of hurtful. Like neither of my chapter knew about FEC till like this year when we brought it up and like we were informing people about FEC so I feel like bringing greater awareness to FEC and how the voting election really works and how people people know how to vote but I feel like their purpose they should really know their purpose of voting and how they can bring bring greater impact to this prestigious organization by by knowing the rules of FEC and by knowing the rules of election per election seasons so I feel like just bringing like FEC by changing like the FEC awareness I'll as a lieutenant governor I'll look at that yeah um so I see this kind of uh FEC situation on two fronts first I think it's the structure and then the uh, and then the actual effects of it so I think the structure of the FEC is completely fine I think the handbook uh that especially that we've all read obviously before we um, decide to run was already quite um, pretty clear and kind of easy to read through and kind of saw exactly what the rules are. Um, so I guess obviously promoting that slightly more by essentially creating more social media posts and then going through CIA and actually showing exactly what these rules are so that way people are very, uh, so they can clearly understand like, oh, this is what the rules are, make sure that, you know, we don't break them. And also emphasizing the strike system so that we don't have, you know, unfair elections. So by creating that two or three strike system, I think works fine. Uh, apart from that, I think the FEC has done an incredible job, apart from just maybe just being slightly more promoted, that might make it a little bit more accessible. But apart from that, I think the FEC has done its job in maintaining fair elections. And specifically, I, don't, I wouldn't find there's any major policy changes apart from that. So I think the FEC has done a, a terrific job so far and hasn't seen any like major effects being done from that where you're seeing a lack of fair election necessarily. One, yeah, one, so one thing I would want to focus on in terms of the FEC is the structure, as everyone else said in the handbook, has been really detailed. And as a candidate myself, it was really like step by step process and I knew exactly what to do, which was really informative. But I think another thing that we could add to that is really making it accessible to not or making it more publicized so that people are more encouraged to like partake in it and also know like the effort and the also the restrictions and also like people said before the strikes and all the, the consequences that come along if you do certain actions making sure that people are just informed of that before they decide to run as well as also I think would be an important aspect to add but other than that I think the FEC has done such a good job in maintaining our elections which is one of the things that I love about Texas JSA in itself because it's kind of like we're already participating in like voting and we've done a good job of maintaining that fair elections in itself. So, yeah. All right, so now for the satirical question, uh, we'll go in the order of Ava, Varun, and Cushy. Question is, if JSA was a dog breed, what dog breed would it be and why? Okay, I would say a golden doodle because golden doodles are like known to be like this like warm, friendly and like 
family dog and that's what i think like texas jsa is like we're like a tight-knit family and even though like we all live in like different parts of the region it's like we have like communicated with each other in so many ways and we get to meet up at conventions and it's not like we're like like it's not like it's not awkward like we connect with each other so easily and it's like as soon as we get to see each other it's like it's an opportunity and like i feel like a golden doodle resembles that because it's like i've seen so many of my friends have golden doodles and it's like as soon as the dog comes to me it's like i feel a sense of warmth and that's whenever i that's whatever i feel like whenever i attend any type of texas jsa event it's like i feel like a sense of comfort knowing that like this is the place where i'm meant to be and i feel like te texas jsa really embodies that kind of like home and like family spirit Oh, sorry, I forgot. I didn't realize I was muted. Um, so this is kind of like, you can call it basic, whatever, but I think I think it's really fitting for what it is. And I think it's a golden retriever. For the main reason is because golden retrievers are extremely versatile, right? Like you can never go wrong with it. Like it's not too small, it's not too large. You know, it'll never get bored, but it's not gonna like overwork you. So I think the fact that it gives you so many different opportunities, right? So you don't have to be necessarily like a big political nerd for you to join JSA. Um, you know, you can be, you know, you might have interesting ideas for publicity or fundraising, or you might be a political nerd, or you might be a political nerd like me, where you like to be engaged in debates and stuff like that. So it gives you so many different opportunities that you can adapt to. And but at the same time, you always have to have some sort of maintenance. So the golden retriever is not just a dog you can just leave around and just, you know, let, let it grow on its own, essentially. It just definitely needs its maintenance. So that's where you, the cabinet departments, when they all work together, you're able to keep it as a fluid running machine. So that versatility, Plus the you know the somewhat medium amount of maintenance allows us to really make JSA a really cool machine. Okay, I was gonna say golden retriever, but just to be different, I'll go with German Shepherd. We actually had a German Shepherd three years back, and I think it was like an all-purpose dog, which reminds me of JSA because JSA serves an all-purpose, like their their agility, their muscular they're muscular and then they're also large just like jsa is and golden retrieve uh golden retrievers are i mean they're they're cute but german shepherd german shepherd really brings out their intelligence just like jsa does and then their members german shepherds are also like a loyal dog which every dog lovers like and they're also confident and courageous just what I like about JSA members that they are not afraid to speak up. They speak up their minds. They join debates. They they are loyal to their to their departments, and they're really hardworking, just like all purpose, as in German Shepherd is. So I, I'd say German Shepherd. Awesome. Okay, so let's move on to our governor candidate, Tez. The first question is, um, the governor connects the state of Texas to the broader national JSA organization. Based on your experience in JSA, what's one thing you would like to change within this role? I think, so based on my experience at Texas JSA, no one really knows about the national scene. I didn't know about the national scene until this year. It's a, it's a big thing like, wait, that exists? And so I, if the one thing I can do is really connect Texas JSA back into the national scene is I feel like these two worlds are often seen away from each other, not connected at all, when in reality they can be connected and I'm the, the piece to, to connect them together. And so hopefully as governor, I will work with, uh, where I'm gonna be placed on the Council of Governors, which if you don't know, that's all right. All the governors from every state are placed on this council and we work on different national initiatives such as the National Cabinet. And yes, that does exist. And yes, you can apply for it. These are all stuff that like exists and a lot of people just don't know about them. And I, I just learned about them this year as well. And so what I really wanna do is connect those scenes back together. And so we can work on a national aspect and see, oh, What's going on in NorCal? What's going on in PNW? Like what works there and how can we implement that in Texas JSA? And vice versa, what is going on in Texas JSA that's working that can help out, you know, the Midwest? And so I really want to connect these two aspects of JSA that were often just ignored and left alone back together and just bring everyone a lot closer on not only on a statewide level, but on a national level. All right. And your satirical question is. If Spring State 2023 was a Taylor Swift song, which song would it be and why? Okay, um, I will preface this by saying I am not the biggest Swifty out there. I have been, I mean, okay, 
I'm a, I'm a little bit of a Swifty. I mean, like I watched her concert on my phone because I didn't get any tickets to the concert. But like, like you know, I know some songs, and you know, people were mad because uh, she played clean and don't let, let the cut bleed a thousand times or something last night. People were upset about that. So I'm on TikTok with with Taylor Swift. But if I had to say one song that Taylor Swift, uh, like a song that represents JSA, I'm gonna go with. I, okay, this might be a little bit basic because everyone says it's such a basic song, but I love Mirrorball. And like, I feel like Mirrorball is just so, it's beautiful. You know, Evermore, it, it is on Evermore, I believe. Um, it, it's it's an album that, oh, every, people just say she ignores, but like, you know, she doesn't because she addressed it at her concert. She doesn't ignore the album, right? And so I really want to bring focus on to Texas JSA. Let's bring focus back and let's put all these resources and energy into Texas JSA, just like her fans put into Evermore to bring it to light. And so Mirrorball, the song, it's just so, it's so beautiful. And, and like, it's just a masterpiece. And that's what Texas JSA is. And JSA and as a larger organization is, is that it just brings people together and it puts you together in this orchestra of just all these moving parts together, but it's just, you're, you're just, you know, flowing along, dancing to the song of, of Mirrorball. And so, yeah. Thanks. Okay. Finally, we have our speaker candidates. Uh, we'll start with Rayleigh and then we'll move on to Pranav for this first question, which is, what is the biggest hurdle facing the Texas JSA House of Representatives? Why and how do you plan on resolving it? I think I think that the biggest issue is that not a lot of issues are actually addressed and are properly amended. And so the first thing I would do is for senators to actually like make a quota for them, or at least like if you want to apply for senator, at least think of some ideas of like what actual legislation that you could write. Because right now we're not seeing like as much legislation being passed, and the ones that are passed not addressing like the key issues with uh, that are haunting like Texas JSA or like the regional JSA chapters. And so my solution to that would be again, which would be like confirm with senators like what they're going to do as like when they're applying for senator, but also not only that, but to have individual meetings with these senators at least like twice, at least once a month or hopefully twice a month to actually confirm with them that like they are writing legislation and that the way that I can like, the way that I plan on making this legislation actually like revolve around the special ideas is what I mentioned earlier by saying there's two step process. The first is that I believe that communication is really key. And so, is to, um, and so by doing that, I want to actually create a form where anyone, any individual or any chapter can actually fill out that they say, oh, our chapter is experiencing fundraising problems or we're experiencing a lack of like members. How can we like, as, or, like resolve this? Or we can go to even a bigger problem such as that like a group of chapters don't really like find JSA that interesting or they want to do something else. How can like the House of Representatives address that? And how can we make conventions more accessible and more exciting and more engaging for these people to actually like routinely come back? And so again, like my main issue right now is that not enough issues are being passed. My solution to that is actually to have mandatory meetings with senators and to actually have like one on one communication with these chapter presidents and individuals that see that there are problems. And then third is to have like to actually enact these changes at the House of Representative meetings as if I were if I were to be Speaker of the House, I would actually properly address these issues. And then once again, we could either like live stream these um, meetings, we could send that amount to YouTube, or we could even provide a summary releasing these or like just summarizing what the meeting accomplished, which each house of representative meeting accomplished, and then set it out to people. That's why that's that's how more people can understand and like see what they do. Yeah, so kind of contrasting that a little bit, I think that one of the major issues that the House of Representatives finds is that they aren't able to pass much legislation. And a more little known fact is that Representatives can also pass legislation, but literally every single piece of legislation that has been passed in like the last couple of years has been by senators. And I think the main reason that that happens is because representatives themselves think that they have to write legislation and target like a very specific minuscule issue. But one way that we can kind of solve for that, and one thing that I think that is the biggest issue or biggest way that we can help the House of Representatives is kind of encouraging collaboration when it comes to writing legislation. And what I mean by that is not only one representative writing a single piece of legislation and targeting one specific issue that maybe isn't really very impactful to them, but also a collaboration, a group of representatives finding an issue that they really think is important for them to solve 
and coming together and writing legislation on a more like collaborative level. And one the way that I can kind of encourage that collaboration is by hosting a lot of meetings between mayors and the representatives themselves. At the start of the year, I plan to make most of the mayors write down a large list of items that they would like to see solved when it comes to legislation and when it comes to the House of Representatives. So not only does this make it a little bit easier for the representatives, but also for certain issues that they see that are important to them, they can talk to other people that have the same issues or have the same ideas that they would like to see implemented or they would like to see changed in Texas JSA. And for our satirical question, uh, we'll have Pranav and then Rayleigh. Question is, what weird food combination, such as Oreos dipped in orange juice, olive oil and ice cream, would you assign to Texas JSA and why? I think I'd probably do milk and, hmm, I gotta think about, like milk and eggs, because I think that those are two really important things to everyone. Like when you drink milk every morning, you think of Texas JSA, or at least I do every morning. And same thing for, for eggs too. It's like part of a healthy breakfast. And I think that breakfast is the most important day, meal of the day. So the most important part of my life too is Texas JSA. So both of these things are really representatives and emblematic of what we can do as Texas JSA and come together, bring protein and calcium to make us stronger as an organization. Um, a little bit of a different approach from Pranav. Um, it's not necessarily the weirdest, but I would say pineapple and pizza. And so a lot of people don't like pineapple and pizza. I necessarily like, I don't hate it. I won't, I may not order it, but if we're ordering like a couple of pieces of friends, I might order one. And like the whole reason that I'm like using this analogy to like show like how similar, like why this is similar to JSA is by saying JSA as itself is just kind of like the pizza crust. It's just there. And the whole reason that like JSA is what it is, is because the pineapples are the individual chapters and the members, such as like the different departments that actually help make it what it is. So again, you may not like pineapple on pizza, but everyone knows that it is a staple and that it's going to be there and it's always an option for you. And so we say that the pineapple is just like the members, like the members can choose to be good. They can choose to be bad. It's up to them. So in saying that, like when everything is cohesive and everything is good, you have a great pineapple and you have a great pizza, you put them together. That's Texas JSA. All right, so that was the end of all of my questions. So thank you to all of the candidates for coming. And then thank you to all of the JSAers who are watching this forum on YouTube. Again, a reminder that the elections will open on Sunday, April 9th and take place through all of next week. Thank you again for tuning in. And of course, best of luck to our wonderful candidates.